Good morning. It's a privilege for me to be with you this morning. I thought I might say something for Christmas, but then next week is really the Christmas Sabbath. But I picked up something a few days ago that I thought might have the beginnings of a Christmas sermon, but I didn't develop it any further than itself. I will share it with you in the fact that we are just a few days away from Christmas and then get into what I am going to say to you this morning. Whenever I go into a card shop, I tend to drift towards the humorous section because I always find something there that makes me smile and lifts my spirits. And I was perusing these cards. I saw one that really caught my attention. An artist drawing, cartoon style, of Jesus laying on the couch in a psychiatrist's office. That in itself is a little bit humorous, but, um, and here's what it said. Jesus was saying, Doctor, my problem is no one remembers my birthday because it's on Christmas. Think about that. We get so caught up in Christmas, in the stuff, in the decorations, in the parties and the dinners that we forget whose birthday we're really celebrating. Well, learning how to talk. Probably none of us here this morning remember when we learned how to talk. And none of us probably remember when we could not speak we just reached up our chubby little hands to our parents or brothers or sisters and made funny noises. Mm, mm, you know, give me this or that. We don't remember when we learned how to talk. King Solomon, who is considered the wisest man who ever lived, wrote a book of Proverbs. It was read to us for our scripture this morning. A word aptly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. Solomon was saying that the right word chosen, the best word you could use at the moment, would be like a fine, precious gem set in a beautiful ring of silver. The tongue is a movable organ in the mouth. It has three basic functions, tasting, eating, and speaking, and for those who have the talent, singing. The true mark of an educated person is one who has the ability to understand words that are heard, spoken, and written. We are advised by King Solomon to use, to choose words carefully and wisely. The words we use in daily living and working should restore and lift up those around us in every way possible. When thinking about that, I am reminded of a term I read one time. It said, use the language of the potential. Use the language of the potential. And with that, a list of words come to mind. Vision, healing, thank you, forgiveness, harmony, 
please, momentum, love, truth, service, unity, hope, restoration, and many more that you could add to that list. The Apostle Paul writes, you who are spiritual should restore. In his culture at that time, he was thinking of those men who wove fishing nets, would use them, bring them in, reweave them, and restore them, not just to rebuild the tool of the net, but also of faith in the future. Restoration, or reweaving the fabric of lives, is one of the obligations of us as Christians. And that obligation begins to be fulfilled when we use the language of the potential. One of the critical tasks of Christians, of any of us, to use the right word at the right time. The language and the words we use will move our families, our spouses, our children, our neighbors, in a direction of maturity in the community. And it, is in, and it is within these groups that people reach the potential. Therefore, the Christian should know the language of the potential. Jesus knew the words of the potential, and learning to talk like him is one of the most important things we can do. Our use of words between each other will build us up in prosperity or tear us down. Our use of words is probably the most significant religious principle we can put into action and practice as we live our lives each day. The use of words become a tool enabling us to act wisely, to think about who we are, what we do, and to be more sensitive citizens in our actions towards one another. But I ask this question, with all the words we have in our vocabulary and all the good words we know, why is it always so easy to say the wrong thing? I would like to ch share that thought with Donald Trump. He's accomplishing some good things, but he seems to have a problem in saying the right thing at the right time. But our choice of words, <clears throat> in many ways, will determine our eternal destiny and will have an effect on the eternal destiny of others around us. There are so many kinds of words to use, and King Solomon speaks about these words throughout his Proverbs when he says there's words of strength, words of encouragement, words that are pure, words that build up, and there's words that tear down. There's words that are idle. There's words that persuade. There's words that are loaded with double meanings. There are words that are kind, and there are words that show love and care towards others. There are God's words, written, spoken, and living. In using the language of the potential, we need to consider Proverbs 15, 18, where Solomon says, Use words that prevent strife. And in Proverbs 16, 32, words that reveal inner strength of our character. In Proverbs 22, 10, words that will bring peace 
in troubled times. The language of the potential is the use of words that inspire and lift others up. The great leaders of the world are remembered for the things that they said, their choice of words, and how they used words to move others into action. The right words will move people into a position and action to do what seems impossible to accomplish at the time. During World War II, Winston Churchill used words that inspired his country and the Allied soldiers to be victorious in almost insurmountable odds. Franklin D. Roosevelt, during the early 30s, in his fireside chats on the radio, inspired Americans to pick it up and work themselves out of a depression. JFK moved Americans to service and challenged the scientists to press forward and put a man on the moon. Martin Luther King, Mandela, Gandhi, with their words inspired men to put aside racial prejudice. The best words are the words of Jesus, words of inspiration, words of love, words of healing, words of forgiveness. In John 7, 46, the text says, never a man spoke like this man, and never were words filled with so much power as when Jesus spoke them. To the lame man, he said, go wash. To the widow, he said, your son lives. To Lazarus, he said, come forth and live again. To the woman at the well, go your way and sin no more. And to the sick woman who reached out to touch his garment, he said, your faith has made you whole. Amen. Never have there been words uttered in this world that contain such power as the words of Jesus. We all look forward to hearing these words. Well done, you've been a good and faithful servant. Enter into God's kingdom. So as we speak to one another individually, as we speak or write to audiences, larger or smaller, let us be aware of our leadership potential through the use of our words and our language of the potential. And may the words we use between each other develop those who hear or read to be greater citizens of this world and even greater citizens of God's world to come.